Hello everyone, welcome again. In this lesson, we are, we are going to start our new topic, which is inheritance tax. Now, inheritance tax is also just like capital gains tax. Capital gains tax is a capital tax and inheritance tax as well is a capital tax. So it is not income tax, it is capital tax. So we have to pay on the capital, not on the income. Now, like the name says, inheritance tax, so it is part of the inheritance, whatever you inherit, that you will have to pay tax on that. Please remember, from, uh, from uh, as far as the inheritance tax is concerned, uh, we will be calculating inheritance tax from the perspective of the donee, uh, not the donor himself. Because I hope that you would appreciate the fact when someone is transferring, when someone is giving a gift of an asset or a land or whatever, they will be died, right? Because it is going to uh, be inherited by the someone who, whom this going, gift is going to be made. Now say for example, Mr. A has gifted a piece of land to his son. So upon his death, upon the donor's death, Tony will have to pay tax. Because obviously when, uh, the, when the donor will die, uh, they won't be, he won't be able to uh, pay tax anyway. Right? So that's why it, it is always calculated from the donor's point of view. Right? So it is, um, uh, as, as the name says, it is inheritance tax. So it is paid on the inheritance. There are two types of transfers and two types of tax as well, basically. You might have to pay tax during your lifetime and you might have to pay tax on death as well. Now, when you will have to pay tax, it means obviously a donee. And in most cases, during lifetime tax as well, it is paid by the donee because he will be the eventual owner of the gift anyway. Right? So whenever you have gifted something, uh, so donee will uh, take that gift and they will have to pay tax on that because it will, it will be considered as uh, inheritance tax. Right? Now, gift could be made in two you know, times. Uh, two times mean that two point of time. So one gift can be made during the lifetime and another gift will be made on death. Now when it will be made on death, it is obviously it will be part of the will. So whatever you know, someone had written in the will, the, when they will die, so whatever was written in the will, the eventual owner will be the ones who are in the will. Right? Now that person can make some lifetime gifts as well during his own lifetime. Right? So there are two types of gifts. Now I've made a, a little table here on the, on the board. Please make sure you note it down or just wait for a while while I fill it completely then you can note it down. Right? So uh, in first of all, it's, I, I said that time of uh, transfer. So one is lifetime transfer, which gift which you make you in, in, during your lifetime. And uh, another one is on the death. Now when we talk about gift at death, there is only one gift at death which is part of the will. So it will be uh, on the death estate. So whatever uh, you know, diseased person has in his own estate, whatever he got in his estate, they will have to pay tax on that. Right? Now that is a death estate, uh, as it says here, type of transfer, it is death estate. On death there could be only one transfer which is death estate. Uh, on death estate, do we have to pay any lifetime tax on death estate? Now think about it. It is death estate, so it is at the time of the death, so life is gone. So you won't have to pay any tax uh, on death estate during the lifetime. So there won't be any lifetime tax on death estate. It is so obvious that it, is a, uh, it will be calculated on the death of the deceased person. So there won't be any lifetime tax because uh, it is the death time anyway. So lifetime is gone anyway. Right, so there won't be any, uh, you know, lifetime tax on death estate. However, there will be, a, you know, tax on the death estate on death, and uh, that is say, uh, you know, death transfer. So you will have to pay a tax on the death estate at the time of death. Right, so that is a, a death transfer, and there is only one transfer on death, which is the death estate. Now, if we talk about the lifetime transfers. And there are two types of transfers during lifetime. One is a gift from one individual to another individual. So Mr. A has transferred to Mr. B or Mr. A has transferred a gift uh, to his son. Like, right? So it is a gift from one individual to another individual. Now it is called a pet. It is not a pet which you keep at home, obviously. It is potentially exempt transfer. Now it is potentially exempt transfer. So potentially exempt transfer basically is a gift from one individual to another individual. So it is from one human to another human. So we'll write it down. Uh, 
individual to individual. So from one individual to another individual and it is our potentially exempt transfer. If you want to, if you want to write down full form, you can write it down a uh, potentially exempt transfer. A second one is a chargeable lifetime transfer, CLT. Now it is a gift from one person to a trust. So it is not from one person to another person. Uh, however, this one is from one person to another trust. Now why someone would transfer to a trust instead of an individual? Because they don't trust individuals. So that's why they are transferring to a trust. Now what is trust? Trust is a separate body and there will be some people looking after the trust. So you will transfer an asset into the trust and because you want, uh, you want to send this asset to your son but your son is too young to be responsible of that asset. So you don't trust anyone else to take care of that asset until your uh, son comes of the age so that he can be responsible. But so that, uh, uh, that's why you are transferring it to a trust. So you will be transferring this asset to a trust and trustees will be looking after that asset and they will eventually uh, you know, transfer that asset to the beneficiary who will be your son upon your death. Right? So that is the way it works. So you will transfer to a trust. So if you transfer, uh, if it is a transfer from a person to a trust, uh, it is called a chargeable lifetime transfer. It is not potentially exempt transfer. It is chargeable lifetime transfer. So it is going to be from one individual and to a trust. So it is from individual to a trust. Right? So, uh, potentially exempt transfer and chargeable lifetime transfer, there are two types of transfers um, you know, during our lifetime. Now, as far as a, a potentially exempt transfer is concerned, when you make a transfer from one individual to another individual, you don't have to pay any lifetime tax on that. No lifetime tax uh, whatsoever uh, on potentially exempt transfer. Now, you won't have to pay any tax on death as well, it depends on that when have you transferred this asset. So if it is uh, more than seven years uh, since you have transferred this asset uh, on your death, so if it has been more than seven years from the date of transfer to the death, uh, then you won't have to pay any tax at all. However, if it is within the seven years period, you will have to pay tax. Right? So it will be death tax uh, only if, you know, if transferred within seven years. So if it is transferred within seven years before death, you will only have to pay. If it is transferred within seven years before death, you will have to pay uh, on death tax as far as potentially exempt transfer is concerned. Right? Now if it has been more than seven years, then you don't have to pay any tax. You don't have to pay any tax during lifetime anyway, but you don't have to pay any tax on death either uh, it has been, if it has been more than seven years. So which means the earlier you transfer the asset, it is good for you because your beneficiary is not going to pay any tax on that um, if you transfer it earlier. Right? Now come to uh, chargeable lifetime transfer. You will have to pay uh, tax on the chargeable lifetime transfer during, during your lifetime. So you will have to pay, uh, you know, lifetime tax on a chargeable lifetime transfer. So whenever you have transferred an asset to a trust, you will have to pay tax during your lifetime. And you will also have to pay a tax on death as well. Again, same rule will apply if transferred within uh, seven years uh, before death. So again, we'll write down the same thing. So if a uh, transferred... Uh, Hang on, it is double F. So if it is transferred uh, within seven years before death, and if it is, it, if it has been more than seven years since you have transferred the asset uh, upon death, um, and so if it, there is a gap of more than seven years, then you won't have to pay any. A chargeable lifetime transfer uh, tax on inheritance tax on the chargeable lifetime transfer on death. So you don't have to pay any tax if it is more than seven years. If it is within seven years, then you will have definitely have to pay a chargeable lifetime transfer. Yeah, you tax on the chargeable lifetime transfer. 
All right. Uh, another thing as well for chargeable lifetime transfer, when you are calculating the death tax, you will always have to take the gross value. Please make sure you write it down. Gross value uh, whenever you are, um, you know, calculating the death tax on chargeable lifetime transfer, you will always you will always have to take the gross value. When I say gross value, uh, what I mean is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I will have to take net price, <coughs> net price here. And during your lifetime on the chargeable lifetime transfer, you will take the net price, then you will calculate the tax on that. Now, whatever tax you have paid here during your lifetime, tax plus the net amount is going to be gross value. So you will take the net amount and you have to calculate tax on that, lifetime tax. So you will take the net amount plus the tax which is on that, and that will be the amount which is called gross value. And on death, you will have to pay tax on the gross value. But another thing is, uh, you might be uh, you know, thinking that what about the tax which we have paid during our lifetime? Do we have to pay more tax on deaths? Because we have already paid some tax on the same asset during our lifetime, why are we paying again on death? So the answer to this question is that the tax which you have paid during, during your lifetime will be deducted here, so the net effect is going to be, uh, you know, the net effect is going to be the uh, balance because uh, whatever you have paid during your lifetime, it will be deducted from that total anyway. So you, there will be only only one tax which will be deducted. All right. Now, if you want to note down this uh, table, you can do so. I'm just going to share the screen with you so that we can read uh, um, read the notes together. Now, as you can see on your screen, page number 65 of your lecture notes, inheritance tax. Right then, it says uh, all transfers of assets worldwide made by a person domiciled in the UK, whether during lifetime or on death, are within the charge to inheritance tax. A chargeable person for IHT purposes, IHT simply means inheritance tax, uh, are individuals and trustees. There are two main chargeable occasions for individuals. One is gift made in the lifetime of a donor, which is lifetime transfer, and another one is uh, assets transferred on death, for example, property uh, is left in a will. Uh, in the same way I showed you here on the board, one is a lifetime transfer, another one is a death transfer. Now, death transfer, there could only be one transfer on death, which is death estate. Uh, and however, there are two transfers in lifetime. Now, after that, it says inheritance tax rates. Now, inheritance tax rate is, uh, you know, at the rate of 40% normally, uh, but the first 325,000 pounds is going to be at the rate of 0%, which is called a uh, nil rate band. The nil rate band is uh, of 325,000 pounds for our current tax year. Say, for example, if your question involves more than two years, if the question involves the 2013, 14, 12, 13, them years, then in the tax table section of your exam paper, examiner will give you the you know nil rate band of that specific year. So examiner will give you the a nil rate band of that specific year if he, if he examines. But for our current tax year, it is 325,000 pounds. And for our new future you know, tax years as well, we will assume that it is 325,000 pounds. So first 325,000 pounds, you don't have to pay any tax on that. That will be 325,000 pounds at the rate of 0%. And on excess, uh, on excess of that, it is going to be a 40% tax rate. However, if you, are, um, if you have paid uh, during your life, uh, it is going to be half of what you pay on death, so it will be at the rate of 20%. Right, as you can see on your notes. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the next thing is uh, lifetime transfers. Uh, as I told you earlier uh, on, on the board, one is potentially exempt transfer and another one is chargeable lifetime transfer. Now there are certain exemptions available. Um, exemptions applying to potentially exempt transfer only. Now these are the exemptions which only apply to potentially exempt transfer. So we will take the value of the uh, gift and then we will deduct different exemptions and after deducting the exemption, whatever the net amount is, we will have to uh, calculate uh, the tax on that. So £325,000 at the rate of 0% and excess is going to be at the rate of 40% uh, or 20% depending on when you are paying it. Now these are the exemptions which apply to potential exempt transfer only. First one is a small gift exemption. So when I make a gift which is worth £250 or less than that, <coughs> excuse me, to other, to other individual, so it is exempt. However, I cannot do more than £250,000. So per person I can transfer £250,000. So if I have three nephews, I can transfer 250 each to each of them. 
However, what I cannot do is, one nephew, which, I, which is my favorite nephew, what I will say to other nephews that I'm giving you a 250 pound each, please transfer this amount to that nephew, which is my favorite. I cannot do that because if, although I am giving to different people, which is 250 pound each, which is within the, uh, you know, which, within what, what is allowed by law, uh, but what I, what eventually I am doing is, uh, eventual beneficiary is my favorite nephew, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, HMRC say you cannot do that, right? So that's what it says in the notes. Uh, first 250,000 pounds uh, is going to be exempt under the small gift exemption if you have transferred it. After that, uh, mm, there are exemptions which apply to CLT and uh, potentially potential exempt transfer, both of them. So these are the exemptions which apply to both of them. First one of which is called annual exemption. Now annual exemption is 3,000 pounds for our current tax year and it is going to be 3,000 for previous years as well. So you can deduct 3,000 pounds annual exemption for our current tax year. Another good thing is that if there is any unused annual exemption from previous years, you can use in current year after using your current year's annual exemption. So that is the one benefit of annual exemption as well. But please remember annual exemption is the last exemption which you can deduct. So first what you have to do is you will have to deduct all other exemptions, whichever there are in inheritance tax, deduct all of the other exemptions and the last exemption is going to be our uh, annual exemption. Right? So that was our annual exemption. Now, in, in the, I'll just read the highlighted portion. There is one mistake here. I, I hope that you have already spotted it. Uh, so it says, uh, any unused portion of the annual exemption is carried forward for one year only. Only use it in the following year after that year's own annual exemption has been used. It's used. If there is any mistake in, in your notes, please make sure you rectify it. If there is no mistake in your notes, that's perfectly fine. So it's not sued, it is used. Right, normal expenditure out of income. So we are reading uh, the exemptions which apply to both uh, chargeable lifetime transfer and potential exam transfer. So next one is on page 66, a normal expenditure out of income. So whatever you have paid out of your income uh, and which does not harm your way of living, the way you are living, does not harm your way of living, uh, it is going to be exempt uh, from inheritance tax. Now please remember it is a capital tax, it is not income tax. All right, uh, as I told you earlier as well. So in, in the notes it says uh, inheritance tax is a transfer of uh, is a tax on transfer of capital, not income. So any uh, a transfer of value is going to be exempt if it is made out of the if it is made as part of the normal expenditure of the transfer expenditure is made out of income instead of capitals so it is going to be exempt as well and it leaves the transfer with sufficient income to maintain his usual living uh, usual standard of living so it will also be exempt now if there is any regular payment if you're paying any regular payment out of your pocket uh, like uh, children's school fee that is going to be exempt as well uh, after that it says uh, uh, gifts on occasion of marriage they depend on who is giving the gift. So for your parents, so from either of the you know, wedding parties, either the bride or the groom, uh, if the parent is of the bride or the groom, they can pay 5,000 pounds, it is going to be exempt. And for remote ancestors, say for example, grandparent, it is going to be half of that and 1,000 pounds is for uh, all other people, uh, as you can see in your notes. And after that it says exemption applies to and these are the exemptions which apply to death estate as well on top of potential exempt transfer and CLTs. So these exemptions apply to all of the transfers. Uh, first one of which is gift between spouses. So if you made a gift to your spouse, to your wife or she made any gift to you, it is going to be uh, exempt for inheritance tax purposes depending, uh, I mean assuming uh, that Dhoni is living in the UK and his domicile in the UK. Right now, if the donor is not domiciled in the UK, if a uh, transfer is domiciled in the UK, but the do, uh, transferee is not domiciled in the UK, then what will happen is that up to three hundred twenty-five thousand pounds is going to be exempt, and the rest of the amount, excess amount, is going to be potentially exempt transfer. Now, this three hundred twenty-five thousand pounds, please do not confuse it with the nil rate band. It is something else. Now, nil rate band is an, uh, something else, whereas this. Uh, you know, 325,000 pounds exemption for spouses, it is something else. So it is on top of what you get for nil rate band. 
And another thing as well, uh, like I mentioned on the, no, uh, you know, on the board as well, that there are two different nil red bands. So in, during your lifetime, you will get another nil red band and on death you will get a separate nil red band. So there are two di different nil red bands. Uh, first one you will get during your lifetime and another one you will get on death. Uh, I have mentioned on top of that as well. All right? Now if you if you want to rewind the video you can see if because it is a in the in, in the small portion anyway uh, on, on the corner of the video uh, because I've already shared the screen. So if you want to rewind the video uh, you can check that uh, calculated using nil red band during lifetime and on this one calculated using nil red band at death so there are two different nil red bands available to you and this exemption which is 325,000 pounds only if your donee if your transferee spouse is not domiciled in the UK and uh, first 325,000 pounds is going to be exempt and access is going to be chargeable uh, as potential exempt transfer as it says in the notes now this is a first party, first party which is if I transfer to this party it is going to be exempt. Which is first party? Spouse. Now there are three other uh, exempt parties as well which we are going to see now. So there are all together four exempt parties and uh, I will ask you again when we move to another topic because we are going to use these parties in some other topics as well. So please remember there are four different parties. If we transfer to them uh, it is exempt. One party is uh, spouse. So the next one are transfer to UK charities are exempt from capital uh, from inheritance tax so another one is a uh, UK charities then it says uh, a gift to qualifying political parties are also going to be exempt and what is qualifying uh, political party it says beneath that uh, that at least has two members in house of commons or one one member and who has secured 150,000 votes in the last general election and after that, uh, so there are two, you know, another two parties. So one is spouse, another one is UK charity, then the third one is qualifying UK, uh, you know, qualifying political party. And then the last one is going to be for national purposes. So if you transfer to any of these parties, it is going to be exempt. So there are altogether four different parties. Uh, so when you transfer to them, uh, it is going to be exempt. Right? On uh, next page, if you move to page number 67, it says lifetime tax on lifetime transfers. So how to calculate the tax on during your lifetime? One is potential exempt transfer, another one is life, uh, chargeable lifetime transfer. Now, same thing which I've told you on the board. Uh, so we will just be uh, you know, looking at some additional things as well. So as I showed you on the board, potential exempt transfer from a gift from one individual to another individual, you don't have to pay any tax during your lifetime you don't have to pay any tax on death as well it depends on that if it is more than uh, seven years if it is within seven years then you will have to pay death tax now as it says in the notes as well same thing if transferee uh, trust pays the tax now there are two different things uh, this this thing is a little different so it depends on who is paying the tax if transferee is paying the tax <coughs> excuse me if transferee is uh, paying the tax and uh, then the tax rate is going to be different and uh, um, you know 20 percent basically and if the transfer who is transferring the asset if he says that i will pay the tax then the tax rate is going to be 25 percent anyway how to calculate the tax <clears throat> first of all it says on top of that it says uh, there is no lifetime tax on potential exam transfer there is only death tax on pet if donor dies within the seven years of making the gift right and, uh, and then after that it says lifetime tax on CLT if transferee pays the tax uh, when a CLT is made and the transferee pays the lifetime tax follow these steps to work out the lifetime uh, inheritance tax on it right so we'll have to follow these steps the first step is look back seven years from the date of transfer to see if any other CLTs have been made and calculate how much of the nil red band is used while how much is remaining now we'll take the date of the uh, transfer because in the question you will see many different transfer at, uh, being made at many different dates. So when we are calculating the, calculating the inheritance tax, so we will have to pick up that date and beneath, uh, before that date, if there are any uh, other CLTs made within the seven years period, then you will have to deduct the uh, you know, nil red band first out of them, then the remaining nil red band we will choose against this asset, right? 
Right then, so that's what it says. We'll read again step one. So look back seven years from the date of transfer to see if any other CLTs have been made and calculate how much of the needle red band is used while how much is remaining. And after that, it says any part of the CLT covered by the nil red band is going to be at the rate of 0%, and on top of that is going to be 20%. Remember that death tax was, uh, death tax was at the <coughs> excuse me, uh, death tax rate was at the rate of 40%, and I told you that a lifetime tax is half of that, which is going to be 20%. So that's what it, sa that's what it says here. Uh, lifetime tax is going to be uh, 20%, uh, assuming that trustees, uh, transferees will uh, pay the tax. Right, and after after that it says uh, if a transferor pays the tax. Now why is it so? Why is HMRC saying that I will charge you more tax if you are paying from your own pocket? Uh, it is saying to a uh, transferor. Now because uh, uh, the way inheritance tax works is I will transfer the asset, so HMRC will deduct out of that. Uh, uh, HMRC will deduct the inheritance tax out of that asset. So whatever the value of that asset is, HMRC will deduct out of that asset. So it is easier for HMRC to recover rather than if I, I say to HMRC, don't deduct out of the asset, I will pay from my own pocket. So HMRC will say, you might pay, you might not pay. Because I am taking the risk, HMRC is saying because I am taking the risk, so I will charge extra 5% from you. So that's why they are charging 25% if the transfer is paying the tax. So it says that if transfer uh, individual pays the tax, when CLT is made, uh, give me one second. When a CLT is made and transfer uh, pays the lifetime tax, follow these steps. So first step is uh, look back seven years from the date of transfer to see if any other CLTs have been made and, and calculate how much of the nil red band is used and why how much is remaining. Now the remaining nil red band, up to the remaining nil red band, is, it is going to be at the rate of 0% and on top of that it is going to be at the rate of 25% in this case because transfer is going to be the tax. Work out the gross value, gross transfer, by adding the net transfer and the tax together. In the same way I showed you on the board, if you look at the CLT portion, if you have noted it, noted it down on, on your notebooks, if you look at the CLT portion and on death side, I told you that it will be taxable if transferred within seven years before death and in the brackets I showed you we'll take the gross value. Now how will we take the gross value I've already told you anyway. So that's what it says in the step three. So we'll have to take the gross value. So the tax amount which you have paid during your lifetime plus the net amount is going to be a gross value. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then after that it says death tax on lifetime transfers. So how much tax you have to pay on death so that is the way to calculate it. If transfer dies within the seven years of making a patch, it will become chargeable to death. So you know that um, pet will only be payable during the tax on the pet will only be payable if the individual dies within the seven years. Right? Also, all C CLT. Uh, if there is a mistake in your notes, it says CTS in my notes. So if you, there is a mistake in your notes, please make sure you rectify it. Uh, it is all CLTs. Also, all CLTs made within the seven years before the death uh, will become chargeable to death as well. So we'll have to follow these steps for uh, pets and CLTs on death. So we are calculating, calculating tax on death. So first step is going to be compute, uh, compute all, uh, so compute the value of the CLT and pet, a uh, gross value of the C CLT will be used, uh, which was worked out for computing lifetime tax. So we'll have to calculate the, how much is the value of the pet and how much is the value of CLT. While, calcul while calculating the value of the CLT, we'll have to take the gross value. And in the step two, it says, look back seven years from the date of each transfer to see if any other uh, chargeable transfers, uh, CLTs or PETs, were made. Uh, if so, we, uh, we will see that how much of the nil red band they have used and how much of the nil red band is remaining. Now, up to the remaining nil red band, it is going to be at the rate of 0%. And on excess of that, we know death tax rate is 40%, so we'll have to pay tax at the rate of 40%. And another uh, you know, step four is added here, which is taper relief. We will have to deduct the taper relief if applicable. Now, what the taper relief is, it depends on how much time it has been since you have given the gift and um, the difference between the date you have given the gift and the date of death. So if the difference is more than three years, then you will get some taper relief which will be deducted 
out of your tax liability. So it will reduce your tax liability. Now the more time it has been since your gift and the date of death, the more time it is, the more lengthy this period is, more uh, taper relief you will get. So it is from 20% to 80% basically. Now as you can see on your, uh, on your notes, uh, if it is three or less, um, three years or less than that, it is going to be 0%. Now what is this three years or less than that? On top of that it says years between transfer and death. <coughs> Excuse me. And if it has been um, more than three years but less than four years, it is going to be 20%. And it can go to a maximum of 80% if it has been more than six years but less than seven years. And what about if it is more than seven years? We know that if it is more than seven years, it is going to be exempt. So it is going to be 100% basically. All right? We already know it. <coughs> Excuse me. And on uh, step number five, it says deduct any lifetime tax paid. And we know that lifetime tax is only payable for CLTs. There won't be any lifetime tax for pets anyway. So we'll have to deduct the lifetime tax which we have paid for chargeable lifetime transfers. All right? Now before we, uh, you know, go further, let's do a question on, uh, let's do a question on uh, inheritance tax basics. And so that we can understand this. I assume that you have already noted it down. If you haven't, please make sure you rewind the video and note these things down uh, because uh, I'm now erasing it because I have to do the question on the board. If you come to um, BPP exam kit, question number four. Now this is not actually question number four. It, uh, if you go to uh, end of the exam kit, BPP exam kit, there are few mocks given to you, few mocks. Now if you open first mark, mark number one, question number four please. Mark one, question number four please, of the BPP exam kit. It is past exam paper and it was examined in, in June 2011. Right, so we will read the questions together first and then we will do it on the board. We will do just a small portion of that, so if you look at the part A of this requirement, it says uh, set out uh, together with supporting calculation the inheritance tax and capital gains tax implications of the transfer of the UK property uh, to the trust and dates on which any tax will be payable. Now we'll leave the date portion because we don't know about the dates yet. We haven't covered it yet. And so we'll leave the date portion. So when we finish in inheritance tax, <coughs> excuse me, then you, will, you can come to this portion and uh, complete this question. So, inheritance tax on the transfer of UK property to a trust. So let's see where it is. Here it is. A transfer of UK property to a discretionary trust. So, when it is transfer from a person to a trust, what is it? Is it a pet? Yeah, you're right, it is not pet. Because pet is a transfer from one individual to another individual. This is transfer from an individual to a trust. So when it is transfer from an individual to a trust, what is it called? Yeah, you're right. It is called a chargeable lifetime transfers. So it is chargeable lifetime transfer, which means that you will have to pay lifetime tax and you will also have to pay death tax. Now, lifetime tax will be how much? Yeah, you're right. Half of death tax. So death tax rate was 40 percent. Lifetime tax is 20 percent. But hang on, it depends on who is paying the tax. So if transfer says I will pay the tax, then it is going to be 25 percent. Now, if you know the transfer is paying the tax, uh, so it, if it is deducted out of the uh, value of the asset, then it is going to be 20%. So we'll see that who is paying the tax, and accordingly we will calculate the uh, tax liability. So uh, it says uh, Capstone uh, acquired the property in May 2008 for 285,000 pounds. The market value of the property on 1 May 2017 was 425,000 pounds, right? So for our inheritance tax purposes, we'll take the market value. So that is the market value of, uh, uh, of the property on 1st of May 2017, uh, which is going to be 425,000 pounds. Then it says, so market value of the property on uh, 1st of May 2017 was 425,000 pounds. And then it says Capstone had used the property as a second home throughout his period of ownership. Capstone will pay any uh, inheritance tax due on the gift of the property to the trust. 
So if it is saying that capstan will pay. Now who is the capstan? Capstan is a person who is transferring the uh, transferring the asset. So uh, Mr. Cap will have to pay tax. So when we know when a transfer is paying the tax, we know it is not 20%, it is going to be at the rate of 25%. Right then, let's kill this question together. I'm just going to cancel the shared screen so that we can do the question together. Uh, if you have the BPP exam kit, it is a, a page number uh, 245, I think, and uh, it is a uh, question number four of the second, uh, question number four of the first mock exam of BPP exam kit, which you can find at the end of the BPP exam kit, and uh, just of the just after the answers. So just I'm going to cancel the screen now. And cancel the shared screen basically. All right then. So, uh, how much for the value? Four hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. So, the value is four hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. So, value of property. Value of property. It is going to be four hundred twenty-five thousand pounds. What we are calculating basically is a lifetime tax, right? So we'll have to write down the lifetime tax as well on top of that. So it is a lifetime tax now because it is a CLT so we know that uh, we, will ha we will have to pay tax on CLT during our lifetime so lifetime tax on CLT it is chargeable lifetime transfer so value of the property is 425,000 pounds now what we have to deduct out of that is you remember there was something called annual exemption right now because there is any uh, there, there isn't any other exemptions because i told you that annual exemption will be the last one to be deducted and because there isn't any other and uh, there isn't any other exemption so we will now deduct the annual exemption out of that now our current tax year is 1617 i think <coughs> excuse me no it is one uh, first of may 2017 so it is going to be 1718 so annual exemption so annual exemption for our current tax year uh, which is going to be 17, 18, and it is going to be 3,000 pounds. And we will have to use the previous year's annual exemption as well because it does not say anything about the previous year. So we will assume that the previous year's annual exemption is still available in full. So if it is still, still available in full, uh, we will have to deduct the annual exemption of the previous year as well. And it is going to be for the tax year 16, 17 annual, annual exemption. Now, how much is it? Uh, 41900. It is going to be 419,000 pounds. So, that is the amount on which we will have to pay, you know, inheritance tax. Right? So, that is the net amount. Always write this thing here because for we know that it is a chargeable lifetime transfer. So, we will have to take the gross value for our uh, death tax purposes of the CLT. Right, so 419,000 pounds. We know that up to 325,000 pounds, it is going to be at the rate of zero percent, and whatever the remaining is, how much is it? Uh, 75, 94,000. Uh, it is going to be at the rate of 25 percent because uh, transfer is paying the tax. If the transfer is paying the tax, then we'll have to pay. Uh, let me grab my calculator. If the transfer is paying the tax, then we'll have to pay tax at the rate of 25 percent. Right, so 325,000 pounds will be deducted out of the 490. Yeah, it is 94,000 pounds. So 94,000 pounds at the rate of 25%, uh, 23,500 is, is, is going to be our uh, tax liability. 23,500. Now that is the tax which we have to pay. For our uh, death tax purposes, we will have to combine these two. That will be the amount which is gross amount. So 23,500 plus 419,000 pounds, uh, sorry, 419,000 pounds. So the total amount is going to be plus 419,000, uh, 419,000 pounds, uh, 442,500. So that is the amount which is called gross value, right? That is gross value. Now, while cal calculating the death tax, we will have to take this value and we will have to calculate tax at the rate of uh, at the rate of 40% of, of this amount. And then we will deduct the tax which we have paid during our lifetime, which is this amount. Now, death tax will only be payable uh, if the individual does not survive for seven years after making the gift, right? So it will only be payable in that case. Let me take my marker's cap.
All right then. So, so that was uh, our rechargeable lifetime transfer. Now, say for example, if this, uh, you know, if this was uh, transferred by an individual, uh, however, the transferee will pay the tax. Now, everything else will be exactly the same. We'll take this value, then these, uh, you know, exemptions will be deducted. <coughs> Excuse me, up to 325,000 is going to be at the rate of 0%. However, remaining amount is going to be at the rate of 20%. Uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, uh, rest of the st uh, stuff is uh, going to be exactly the same. Uh, so whatever the 20% is going to be, we'll have to take that amount and we'll add 419,000 pound into it to take the gross uh, value of this asset. All right. Now in the requirements section, it's said to us that uh, tell us any exemptions you have made, uh, not exemption, uh, tell us any assumptions you have made uh, with regards to this question. Now with regards to this question, I have made this exam uh, assumption that this annual exemption, uh, annual exemption is available in full and for previous year as well, uh, annual exemption is available in full. Also this 325,000 pounds nil rate band, I have made an assumption that there isn't any other gift within the seven years period. Uh, if there would have been any other gift within the seven year period, then this annual exemption would have been deducted first from that gift and then the remaining nil rate band we will have taken at the rate of 0% and then the excess is going to be at the rate of either 25 or 20%. All right? So that is the end of our question and uh, uh, that is the end of our first lecture of inheritance tax as well. We will continue with inheritance tax in our next video and uh, so I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.